Okay, welcome back everybody. Patrick here moving on with the weighted average cost of capital section. We're now going to be doing this question here. So a company currently has $5 million worth of cash along with debt and equity of $15 million and $20 million respectively. The debt is composed of bonds that mature in 10 years, pay 8% coupon semi-annually and are priced each at $1,040. The cost of equity is 8% and the tax rate is 40%. What is the weighted average cost of capital based on enterprise value? So first thing I wanna talk about is what this means here based on enterprise value. And if you remember when we talked about stocks, we said that the enterprise value is the productive assets on the left side of the balance sheet. So let's draw a balance sheet here. So we got debt we got equity and then the assets have five million dollars worth of cash actually let's write cash first so we got cash here of five million and then the debt is worth 15 million and then the equity is worth 20 million And if you remember, the enterprise value is the rest of the assets here because cash sitting by itself is not really productive. The enterprise value is the productive assets, the assets that are making the company income. So when they say that we're going to calculate the weighted average cost of capital based on enterprise value, usually they're going to give you this excess cash figure that's sitting around. And what you assume that you can do with this excess cash is you could just pay down your debt, if you think about it. You could take this $5 million, pay down the debt by $5 million, and then your assets would just become composed of this enterprise value here. So if we did that, if we took this cash of $5 million and paid down the debt by $5 million, we would end up having debt of $10 million instead of 15. So now we have a balance sheet for this company where the assets is only this enterprise value here. And that's the balance sheet that we're gonna to use to calculate this weighted average cost of capital. So now that we have the new debt and the equity, we know that this asset side of the balance sheet is just gonna be 10 plus 20, which is 30 million. Right, so we have the market value of the debt, market value of the equity, market value of the company. What else do we need? Well, we need to find out what the return on debt is. And return on debt is the yield to maturity. And notice that we are not given the yield to maturity in this case. However, we are given a bunch of information about the bonds that make up this debt here. And we're told that the bonds mature in 10 years pay 8% coupon semi-annually and our price each at $1,040. So if you remember with how bonds work, let's do a little review here. Let's draw it on a timeline. So on time zero, if you were to buy these bonds, you would have to spend $1,040. That would be a negative cash flow. And then these bonds are gonna pay you coupons semi-annually, 8%. Now this 8% is an annual rate, so you gotta take it, divide it by two, which is 4%, and then multiply it by the face value of the bonds, which we're gonna receive in year 10 at the end, which would be $1,000. So taking the face value of 1,000, multiplying it by 4%, we end up getting $40. And that $40 is gonna be paid semi-annually. So in six months or in half a year, we're going to receive a positive cash flow of $40. And then in one year, $40. And one and a half years, we're going to get 40, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to year 10, where we would also get $40 and that face value of 1000. So we can calculate what that uh, semi-annual yield to maturity is with a financial calculator. So we can input everything. So the PV is the price of the bond. So that would be a negative cash flow of 1,040. The payment, or uh, let's actually write the future value here. 
future value is going to be positive 1000 payment is the coupon payment positive 40 n is the number of coupon payments well since this is a bond that has 10 years left to maturity and the payments are happening semi-annually there's going to be how many payments 10 times 2 which is 20. and then we just have to calculate what that i is going to be and when you calculate that i you end up getting 3.71 percent now if you remember these three variables the pmt the n the i they always have to be congruent always have to be the same frequency and since these payments were semi-annual this i that we solved for was a semi-annual rate however this cost of debt is always in annual terms and it's always an effective rate so that's another difference that's going to come up right now um, if you remember with bonds what we did to get that yield to maturity we took that 3.71 percent and we multiplied it by two to get the yield to maturity because that was just an apr but that was in the bonds chapter in this chapter it's a little different because that cost of debt has to be an effective rate so what we have to do is we have to take that period rate of 0 0.0371, 3.71%, and we have to take it to the power of two, and then subtract one, right? If you remember, an effective annual rate is one plus the period rate to the power of M, where M is the number of compounding periods. Well, in this case, because this is a semi-annual rate, we take it to the power of two. So we don't just multiply it by two like we did in the bonds chapter to get the yield to maturity, which was an APR. We have to find the effective rate. So we have to take one plus that semi-annual rate and then take it to the power of two and then subtract one to get that uh, cost of debt as a decimal. So when you do that, you end up getting 0 0.0755, which is 7.55%. So that there, is our cost of debt or our return on debt. So this is gonna be 7.55%. All right, so we have our return on debt. What is next to figure out? We gotta know what our return on equity is because there's also equity for this company and the return on equity, it's nice, it's given as a percent. We don't have to calculate it. So we got the return on debt, return on equity, we got the market values on the balance sheet. We can now find our weighted average cost of capital. And to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, we would just use this formula here. So we can just plug everything in. So we got the debt over the assets. So we got 10 million over 30 million times the return on debt, which we calculated as 7.55, multiplied by one minus the tax rate, 1 minus 0.4 plus equity over assets times that return on assets or a return on equity rather of 8. When you do all this in your calculator, you end up getting 6.84%. So that is the weighted average cost of capital for this company and it's based on the enterprise value. So that's something that was a little different in this question. Whenever you're given excess cash, it's usually a good idea to reduce that debt by the excess cash and just use that enterprise value on the left side of the balance sheet. So you reduce the debt by that excess cash and then you calculate these weights with that new debt figure and that new assets figure. And then another new part of this question that we didn't cover before was calculating this return on debt. We were given a bond with semi-annual coupons. So when we solve for that yield to maturity, that was a semi-annual rate. However, you need to take that to the power of two to get an effective annual rate because this return on debt is always in effective terms. Cost of equity was given, plug everything in, weighted average cost of capital based on enterprise value is 6.84%.